Three three of us are going to go see this uh, new movie, Angels and Demons, and uh, we're checking it out because it brings up a lot of science faith issues, at least that's the promise. I'm kind of curious how they handle the uh, bomb aspect as as I was at least looking at the book. Jeff Swink's going to join me. Uh, He's our gamma ray astronomer. You and I are both, uh, you know, kind of looking at it from a science perspective and how does science and Christianity play together as well as, uh, you know, what sort of scientific content there is in the movie and how factual it might be. And then uh, our staff philosopher, uh, Ken Samples. But I'd like to see what kind of clash is going on in the Vatican, and I think that'll be kind of interesting. So he's going to be looking at the philosophical takes and you know, how the Catholic Church is portrayed. I think that's going to be interesting to him. Me too, for that matter. Reasons to Believe is a uh, science faith apologetics organization. It's a think tank. We tr- attempt to show that uh, Christianity and science are compatible. Yeah, this will be the first movie I've actually gone to in about eight months. So, really? Yeah. <laughs> not a big movie person? Nah, not a big movie person. Also curious as to how small this bottle is with all this antimatter in it. Yeah. Maybe we should see Star Trek while we're over here, the similar concept. Might be more credible. <laughs> <laughs> Our church is at war. We are under attack from an old enemy. It's a way of studying the origins of the universe, what some people call the God particle. Science and religion are not enemies. There are simply some things that science is too young to understand. I thought one of the most powerful elements uh, from my vantage point was that the villain was uh, depicted as a a religious zealot who wanted to protect uh, religion, in this case Catholicism, from from science, but he also had uh, motives to, of, of power. And so that's kind of the, the critique of many people uh, uh, today that they are people who are really zealots and kind of go to the extreme. So that kind of popped out at the end for me. To somebody who doesn't have a little bit of background, you know, kind of the average person watching this, it's a very entertaining movie. I think it's a fairly, yeah. as, a, as an action flick, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I mean, yeah. Uh, um, but it seems like the, the fiction in it makes it seem like the conflict's far more far larger than what it really is. As I've read more on this issue, it seems like this idea that science is perpetually in conflict with faith is really an untenable hypothesis that while there have been conflicts that those seem to be the exception rather than the rule because there are a large number of very devout religious men who were kind of the founders of modern science or or made significant advances so that they kind of play together is far more common than that they're at odds or enemies and to be fair i thought the movie actually bore out that sentiment you had a number of people expressing that uh, view that now, there is no conflict between science and religion. They really have the same quest to find truth. Well, even at the end of the movie, the, the comment was made that you need faith and science. And so right. maybe there was kind of a, a meeting there in the middle that both of them are necessary. And look at the Vatican's record. I mean, for over 100 years, they've been sponsoring these conferences for scientific research. Uh, you know, in astronomy, they have this Vatican conference. Uh, they have their own observatory. Right. right. Hugh, I think the kind of people that, that are really impacted by reasons to believe are the people who have uh, a concept of faith but can't really pull it together with their scientific ideas. And that's where your writings in particular, but all of the resources we have, I think are very helpful for people who are trying to make sense of the science faith issues. And, you know, and I think that's, that's where reasons to believe does serve a function because people are going to walk out of there and if they do start thinking a little deeper about the movie, whether they're talking with friends or stuff, you know, reasons to believe does have something to author and says, hey, no, science and faith aren't in conflict as the movie was seemed to be portraying.